Today, we will be trying to answer the question, how do you make new friends? And with me today, I brought my friend, Ryan. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, so happy to be here, Scott. Thank you. I'm Ryan Chase. Met Scott through a friend of a friend in a Dungeons and Dragons group. So now yeah. I met, I'm a bit of a networker sometimes. Yeah, actually, uh, we can start with that because I feel like our like how we became friends was pretty interesting. It was during COVID. So I feel like a lot of people met in very interesting circumstances during COVID, probably online. And it was because I had a friend that was your coworker. Mm -hmm. And one day she was just like, hey, do you want to play D&D online? And I was like, yeah, sure. Because I've played D&D before in person, but never really online. So I was interested on like how, how this was going to work. And when you DM'd for us that first time around. I was like, this was the most fun D and D session I've ever like played. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's that group honestly saved my social life during COVID. I just started it before of the pandemic had happened, and then once it broke out, I just had a lot of people who wanted to get into it, and I was recruiting left and right coworkers, friends of friends, even dating apps. <laughs> people know, hey, I've got a group. Come and join it. Which yeah, I cast a wide net sometimes. Yeah, what, what gives you that courage or what gives you that inclination to, to start these things? Part of it is I like playing host. I mean, I've done event planning and management for years since I was in college, just organizing events with students. And so once I graduated, I wanted to keep doing that in more to the personal context. So D&D was run reflection of that with the games that I hosted in person and online. But I also started doing a lot of meetups, event outings, house parties. And I just, I've found that when people get into their 20s, they're out of college, or they're out of high school, they're looking for connections. Right. Because you're leaving a phase of your life, of schooling generally, that you've been in for so long. Mm. And it suddenly gets a lot harder to just make and keep friends. You have to put far more effort into it than you That's did very true. before that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I That brings up a question I have for a lot of things, but for this one in particular, nature versus nurture. Do you feel like you've always sort of been that way in terms of like liking the host aspect of things or did were you ever like a shy kid? Like what brought you to that? I have always been like a bit of a ringleader for groups. <laughs> and like gotcha. Not in like the annoying way of like the little group of kids and one goes like, I'm the leader. It's, it's not me. More <laughs> quick, like I like if we're doing something, I was always almost annoyingly like, all right, like when and where? And when that inevitably wasn't answered, I just step in and help decide. Ah, uh, that's a good, yeah, that's a good role to to fill because a lot of people are very indecisive when it comes to those things. It is hard, especially <laughs> just when you're in your adult life trying to plan get-togethers. There's life, even some people are still in school. People have families. It's just you have a million scheduling issues that fly your way rather than yeah. just eh, let's just go hang out after blast. Which is why it's I like organizing events. And I do it way ahead of time too to get people's calendars, but just because it's something that people genuinely need. And you can usually find takers if you're genuine about it and also have a decent rep for just hosting good get togethers. That's true. I feel like for me personally, I've, I think I was also naturally that role for my friend group. The one who actually, hmm, thinking about it a bit more, I have an older sister. And normally when I was growing up as a kid in school, before high school, especially, I would hang out with her a good amount and she would be the one plus the family that always plans these events and hangouts. And I think I learned a good amount from her just seeing how oh she would hang out with her friends or have me there as well and um, do these birthday events. And for me personally, I always have a birthday event every year. And I think it's because we started young and I just saw how fun it was when my sister did hers. So I just like copied and, and kept evolving it every year. How's it grown over time then? It's, it's been f pretty fun in terms of like, how it, how's it changed? If you look at it from like a far away perspective of like m me in fifth grade <laughs> compared to like me now, it's definitely increased a, a substantial amount. Like it used to be like maybe 12 people. Now it's like sometimes my, I think the maximum amount of people that's ever shown up to my party is like maybe 60 something. Whoa, that's a, that's a pretty high number <laughs> for me. Yeah, right, it's, it's crazy. Um, but it's definitely been an interesting process getting to that point. And I, th I think having the benefit of people around me being planners and getting to see how they do it helped a lot in shaping my own way of planning and, and b fulfilling that role and not being indecisive. But I think it really helped that I, I, it happened early in my life. Then developed over time then. 
Yeah, it's a practiced muscle, I'd say. And and I talk about this a lot because I feel like a really good place to start when you're trying to make new friends is to actually host events and invite people to events. I genuinely think that's probably one of the best pieces of advice I can give for anyone who feels like they want to make more friends. I've met a lot of people through people's just plus ones that ran along to parties. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I met someone about a year ago who's become a close friend of mine solely because someone else randomly brought them along to a bar night that I'm hosting. And we just hit it off. And it's it's great when connections like that happen. And when you host yeah. cultural events, there's more chances for that to occur. Yeah, definitely. I, I've i made close friends now that, that were your friends first. <laughs> so <laughs> it's definitely a great place to start for sure. And I think putting in the time too helps since I've fallen out of touch with people except where it's you invite them and they can never make it or that's they're just there's every relationship that is positive I think has an effort invested for both sides. It doesn't always have to be equal and it's not a mercenary give and take <laughs> but it's there's the idea of you're both putting some time into it. That's true. That's true. I'm, I'm very curious because like I mainly go to your bigger events and I'm, I'm wondering like for you personally, do you host a lot of like smaller things? Like, like I feel like a lot of people have friend groups that are like their main friend group, you know, they hang out with them the most or do you primarily do big events? Big actually and small events too. About um two, three, not the months ago, I'd say actually maybe it was uh, last October. I started doing like, a weekly bar night and just inviting everyone that I do locally. Since right, I don't yeah. have like a single just main friend group, I just split around a bunch of different ones, which it's always given me a great pool of people that mm -hmm. I like to invite to things and then they usually hit it off. Nice. Do you feel like you want a main group to hang out with or you're totally cool with just floating around? I'm kind of good with floating around because in the past I have had like, like a main group, but mm -hmm. people's lives change, people come in and out and I've gained and lost friends over the years. It's just people move on or move. You never really know what's going to happen. And it's... I kind of like the idea of I just like to just bite people that I know and hang out with them. And just that's the group. I'm also a big fan of one-on-one -on -one dinners and lunches as well. Yeah, yeah. That's I do that with a lot of people since my, I'm pretty busy with my work schedule. And mm -hmm. so every once in a while, I'll reach out to someone and they'll reach out to me and we'll meet up. Just have like a long dinner. Yeah, one-on-ones -on -one are great. I think they are very, very important in building up like a very, very strong bond. I feel like for me personally... I journal, so I journal a lot about very important days in my life. And a lot of those days are days where I spend one-on-one -on -one time with some of my closest friends. And it doesn't even have to be like anything super special. It's just us like maybe playing games together, hanging out, having dinner, like you said. Um, and it's just such a nice time to, to share quality time with someone that you care about. And, and as much as I do love hanging out with groups a lot, there's something about one-on-ones that isn't the same. Like you, you get that undivided attention with them. And to me, that makes a huge difference. Yeah, agreed. And so I try to make time for them too. I, I think also a maybe overlooked source of friends can be work as well. Maligned sometimes because I can totally get why someone would not want to hang out with their coworkers because like you already see them enough every day. But I'm, mm. I gained a lot of friends through my job. That's technically, that's how you came in, Scott, since I work with your friend. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I've worked with people who like would move to Los Angeles where I live and they knew no one and they'd make friends through work. And that's how they kicked off their network. People didn't know. Yeah. I noticed that when my friends meet coworker friends, it's they have a lot of good stories and stuff, which is really cool. I am curious though. I feel like one of the ways, like going back to how we sort of met, d and I the more I play D&D, &D, the more I feel like it's such a great way to, to meet friends and, and make connections. Even though you're a fictional character, like you're role playing, you're a character, and technically that's not you. Like when your friend is getting attacked by barbarians or something, and you're like helping them out, you sort of just live in that role and it plays out and you guys win together. It, it just feels like you're creating a bond, even though it's a fantasy. Oh, absolutely. I think it is potentially one of the, the purest expressions of social lubricants. Since I, a lot of my friends are on the more introverted side mm -hmm. and it's, it's useful for them because I'm the extra <laughs> I'm doing things. But I've noticed with role-playing games, not just Dungeons and Dragons, but others, that it, it acts as like the common activity. You can all come together and play together. And it, it's kind of a way of hanging out with someone while doing something else. So there's it's something you can focus on and then you have memories that are related just to that activity rather than staring at them for five hours over dinner. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And and for me personally, I was never like some of my friends consider me introverts. Some consider me extroverts. I guess it really depends on how I met them and also just how I interact with them. But for me personally, I've always considered myself an ambivert. So I sort of show both <laughs> sides of things. And as a kid, I was very quiet. But over time, like during college and past that, I became more and more social with people, primarily because I feel like I'm genuinely interested in learning more about others. But also, I just feel like this desire to to just meet as many cool people as possible. In terms of stories and specific examples, do you have any where you've met like newer friends? Probably, I briefly touched on this earlier, but it's it was the person that was dragged all oh, kind of forcibly to one of my bar nights as kind of an afterthought. And mm -hmm. they came along and ended up being the just absolute favorite at the table since they just showed up and immediately it was like, bam, I knew we'd get along. We spoke the same, had similar interests, <laughs> under his, like just similar sense of humor. And I also, I'm usually, I've got a pretty good sense of when I know I'm going to hit it off really well with someone. And in that case, within an hour, I was like, friend, I know it. And after that, I put in effort to, I invited them to events and invited them to join my yeah. playing groups. I'm, I'm curious, curious, what about him made you feel like you would instantly hit it off? Like, what are the signs? It's, I like to, I like to think at least that I have a pretty decent social radar sense. Mm -hmm. I get, can usually get a good feel of how a room is, what people are generally like feeling what the mood is. And it's just sometimes I think there's just, you can tell there's like a connection or a spark. It almost sounds like a romantic thing, but you know, <laughs> friendships, they're also relationships, even if they're not romantically intimate. That's true. And you can just sometimes tell and just hit it off with someone. You're just talking and it's no effort into it because it's just easy. You're not trying to impress each other or peacock off. It's just natural. I see. So it's sort of like their behavior, their demeanor, and just the overall vibes they're giving off. I think it's different though for other people because I, I know other friends of mine who they like to just kind of check people out first a couple times. Mm -hmm. It's just that they like to get to, get to know people just slowly more over time. It's just inviting people out. Like I invite my own coworkers to my parties. It's yeah. I love just yeah. give people the opportunity to join me. That's good. I like that a lot. Like, <laughs> okay, this, this is going to be a interesting question. Do you invite people that you feel like you don't vibe with or like that you feel like not necessarily malice but towards the negative end like you feel uncomfortable around them do you still invite them that's my question that's okay for me it's a case by case thing i do have like for my parties i actually have a master attendance list that i keep mm -hmm. just to know who's coming and i also make i, I also keep track of people that just don't want to come anymore or just like eh, whatever each time and I usually adjust my invites accordingly. Like if I've invited someone to something like eight times, you know what? Make sometimes like it's in the way, but I'll just leave them off the list until if unless they reach out to me again, which also has happened. People go through phases or they're off doing something. Yeah. I have friends that sometimes live or move internationally and that happens. But every once in a while, I've had to deal with someone who just is, I give everyone like a decent shot and a chance. Mm -hmm. But if someone, my rule of thumb, and I had to actually institute this after an incident, is that when someone comes to one of my events, is that they're going to treat everyone with respect and right. kindness. It's if you have problems, you leave them at the door. And if they're problems that are big enough, like, you'd say, like, criminal liability, maybe, yeah, that, that should be addressed. <laughs> but gotcha. if someone's under my roof, I like to think that it's a safe spot. We're just hanging out. If you've got a problem, you can deal with it later, just not when you're with me. That's good. I, I like your approach. I, I feel like it's very similar uh, in terms of the list and everything, because I have this uh, a list as well for people I invite to my events. And totally the same with like, oh, I've invited them like five, six times <laughs> now. And I'm like, they have said no each time. Sometimes people say, oh, I really appreciate the invite though. Like when they say that, I'll invite them again. But if they, if they don't respond, then I will most likely not. And I did have one case of there was someone I wished I'd removed earlier. I just kind of let the problem just kind of trundle along and that I got a lot of complaints and I, uh, I felt kind of bad for this person. I was like, well, I don't want to kick them out. It just felt so harsh. Yeah. But because I, I didn't, I, I tried to just be as nice for as long as possible. It, but it got to the point where they kept starting stuff at my events and I let it go on for far too long and wish I'd acted sooner because sometimes for everyone's benefit, you got to cut someone off. If it's just not working, you don't have to be mean or rude about it. But if someone is just constantly picking fights, making scenes, and you've talked to them about it, doesn't stop, yeah, out. Gotcha. A firm hand. I, I like that. I, 
I think for me personally, I've never had to deal with that. Fortunately, <laughs> um, like lucky. Yeah, very lucky. And I, I think that there are people like who are like plus ones or people that I don't really know sometimes that that come, and I always give them the benefit of the doubt and give them a chance. And for the most part, everything has gone pretty well so far. Like there's not not been any incidents for my stuff. So I'm, I think I'm, that has to do with too. If people are usually decent at social cues. Yeah, and if it's if 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 it's just not working, most people pick up on that and they pack up and take the hit, either mutually or on one side. Yeah, and to go back to the question of like making new friends, a specific example for me was actually at like your your parties. I I think the way I behave, luckily because I have a camera, <laughs> I oh even excuse. <laughs> I do have an excuse. I I take photos of people, mostly candids, and I go around. Asking people if they want non-candidates as well, and it's just a nice sort of way to just get to interact with people because there's already a conversation starter right there. It's like people ask me about the camera, ask me about photography, all that stuff, and it's easy to talk about it since I've done it so much. And some of the people at your party, when I talk to them about those things afterwards, I start asking them about what they like to do. Because I I'm, I already talked about what I like to do, and I think that's a another good tip is to sort of just be willing and able to express what you find joy in and like talking about, so that you can have a good conversation with the other person. Because I feel like that's very important when first forming a friendship is to just be able to talk to them in an earnest way. Yeah, having shared interests is kind of really the classic getting to know someone. Which that's why it helps being in different social groups, like say a sport or a club, some kind of get together, because you just can meet people in the context of something else going on. It just gives you a common bond. Yeah. Because it can be pretty awkward talking to people for the first time, or you don't know them too well. And having like a shared link makes it so much easier. Yeah, but but even even for the example I'm thinking of, um, I think for for the first time that I ever went to your board game night, the way I made friends was actually by playing board games with them. I feel like for me personally, I go wild when I play board games. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's like a very different persona that I normally carry when I'm like my my friends usually describe me as very calm and very、um, polite and whatnot. But when I play board games, it, it it gets to like a big switch, and I I'm like not rude, but I I get really really playful and and much more hyper. I was at a board game club in college, and I can confirm it is a great way to meet people because you're just playing games. It, 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 as long as you're okay with losing, since you'll start losing a lot, <laughs> play a lot of board games. It's inevitable. <laughs> yeah, definitely.、Um, but yeah, that was the first time I went, and I made a fair amount of friends during that time. As、uh, and then afterwards, there was another event where I met a good friend.、Um, well, she's a good friend now, but when I first sort of talked to her, it was. Really interesting for me because I just started telling her about like a lot of different things about my life,、um, primarily about me moving and and just like stories about my personal life. <laughs> and I I'm not entirely sure how we got there, but by being open, she was also open with me, and she would just tell me about stories from her side that were personal, and that's how we sort of got closer and became friends、um, over time. So I think that's another one that I think is really good. Is is it just like sort of be willing to share things like personal things with people that well aren't necessarily going to hurt either side, but it it's just like、um, showing your vulnerability allows other people to be vulnerable too. Especially if you want a deeper connection rather than the usual. So what do you do? Or <laughs> <laughs> how's the weekend? Kind of questions. Yeah. Although I will say that's that's a lot of the <laughs> questions we <laughs> we talk about these days. I feel with a lot of my close friends. But、uh, yeah, going back to those those questions, it's always nice. To, the more personal ones, I mean. I think it's also too. It's important to give people an out sometimes, and that you don't want to overdo it to try to meet someone. Yeah. Because you know what? It's you don't have to be friends with everybody. Seriously, like I I've known people who thought they could do it, and it's like a recipe for disappointment. It just <laughs> you're not going to vibe with every single person on earth. It's impossible, and that's, that's okay,、true. honestly. And it just give people an out. You could be bold and just even say that, or just casually take the hint as well. Yeah. Let me think, because I do want to talk about. Like really close friends and how how we've met them, I can I feel like a lot of my close friends are from high school actually,、mm. but I wasn't 
like I was I wasn't close to like two of them from high school, but afterwards it was a Halloween party, like an event that I wasn't even technically invited to. <laughs> um, it was a high school friend that was hosting it. This was after college finished and someone I knew was going. So I asked them if they could ask the host if I could go. Managed to get in and I just talked to a lot of high school friends that showed up. And eventually over time, they just invited me to hangouts and we just got closer and closer and closer each year. Like I definitely feel the closest to them I've ever felt like this year and last year. And it all started with that Halloween party and being invited to their events. So it's like a good combination of them willing to invite me and also a very fortunate occurrence of showing up to a party that so happened to have everyone there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a very like, so like the like super close friends, I keep like a very tight circle generally of just individuals that I've met over the years, usually mm -hmm. kind of corresponding to like a phase of my life. But I'm also the kind of person that like I can be friends with somebody and I might not talk to them for months at a time. But when we meet up again or get talking, it's like no time has passed at all. And that's, I love that. In that yeah. you can just pick up yeah. the ball, like like it has it a day gone by, honestly. Yeah. When when you say that, I, I think about one of my best friends from, I've known him since first grade. And for this friend in particular, we weren't best friends in first grade, but the way that we became best friends later was actually, in my memory, it's it's a little strange. But what happened was in in sixth grade, what I did was... I thought I heard him talking behind my back. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I kind of like walked up to him right as the bell rang for us to go to uh, either lunch or school was done. I just like punched him in the back and he started crying. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, physical violence is usually not the way to meet people. <laughs> Yeah, definitely not. But for some odd reason, after I did that, I, I punched him in the back. I was like, don't talk about me. <laughs> and then he cried. And then I just w walked away. Like after that, in my memory, somehow, like we just became best friends. <laughs> it, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. But but we just hung out a lot. And it, it wasn't like it wasn't like one of those dynamics where I would just tell him what to do or like he was like an underling or anything. We were definitely equals. As a kid, you know, your brain is so weird. I don't understand the way it works. I don't even think I said sorry afterwards, but somehow we just like got closer and started hanging out all the time. I, I met a friend of mine in middle school because he originally thought I was the bully. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, and it was intimidated by me. I came and said, hi, do you like Legos? And we've been friends for like 15 years ever since. <laughs> that's, so that's how you met? You, you just asked him if he likes Legos? It pretty I, much. <laughs> And he thought you were a bully? <laughs> Originally. Oh, I see. I see. Like the, you know, the tall, pudgy guy in the middle school. I kind of get it. I see. Yeah, that's that's how I met my best friend. I still talk to him now. And it's that situation where I only talk to him maybe like once every three weeks. Um, but we still keep up and stuff. I think friendships too, they can rekindle over time. But I just got back in touch with someone about a month or two ago who I was good friends with in high school. In college, we see each other every once in a while, sporadically, but now we're both back in the same area and just hit it off again. And it's, I think it's never too late to rekindle something if if it both works. Definitely. Person. I like that mindset. I, I, that's, I feel like both of us are similar in this, that sense where we like giving people chances or giving relationships and bonds chances to get stronger. Like even regardless of whatever the situation was like in the past. And I think that's like a, a, a good mindset to have. I think it's also important to not hold a grudge against some of these drifts out of contact because that can just happen naturally. And it's fine unless you've been hammering on their door and got no response yeah. for a long time at all. But it just, it just happens and it's totally normal. I've had friends that come in and out of my life and that's just how it goes. Yeah. My close friends from, from college, the way I met them, it was a event that was sort of like a extra orientation if you wanted to do it. And one of them was from Hawaii, another one from Singapore. And it was interesting because they were literally the first friends I made in college. Uh, somehow we just looked at each other and gravitated <laughs> towards one another and, and just said hi and stuff. And after that first day, like it was great. We, we talked a lot and hung out, but I just didn't do the rest of the orientation event <laughs> while they did. I just ditched it essentially is what happened. Um, and but it was still lucky that we stay connected and stay friends. Um, I think that was very lucky. I, um, just the first people you meet 
before college starts, and they so happen to be the friends you keep for the rest of it, and and that and they're cool and stuff too. That's like a little fun thing about my college, two of my college friends that I thought was really funny. Well, and you never know, you might meet someone. I didn't meet my like very close college friends until my second year. I had a group when I was in my first year, just out of contact, but it was really just, I started working with a group in the housing department and just loved them. And I'm still in touch with a lot of those guys. Nice, so you never nice. know what it can happen, honestly. I think people get wrapped up sometimes on, I have to make friends at a specific time. <laughs> That's true. And I think first impressions as well, like- Oh, true. Those two friends that I just mentioned, the first impression was really great, but there was another friend that I'm still connected to now that we're good friends and at first, it was funny because the group was like, what do you think about this guy? One of one of our friends said uh, in the initial group and and she was like saying how he, she doesn't really like him. He gives off weird vibes, stuff like that. And then the irony was eventually like we grew um, like I we we still kept him in the group and like everyone, you know, he's just quirky. That's it. Um, and and we're we're all good friends now, you know. So it happens of, too. You don't want to get too hung up over first impressions. Because I've had some people tell me it's like, oh, when I first met you, I thought you were an annoying blowhard. It's like, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it happens. Yeah, I feel like there's there's just a lot of things to draw from and experience experiences to draw from from primarily school, I'd say, but also like every event or friends that I made that are close now out of school. It's been through events like parties. Yeah, primarily just parties. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, and like, that's how you meet people when you're in your 20s, usually your 30s. Yeah, so just parties and essentially like you get invited to smaller group events from those parties if you stay connected with them. So that's basically the gist of it in terms of experiences for making new friends for me. Uh, that's a little less abstract and more like examples from my life. It's a lot of mine are, yeah, through plus ones generally for my own events. First connections that I've made through work, other friends. It's, I think you never know when it might happen. It's just being open to the opportunity when it arrives is good. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me during college, I, uh, after college finished, I would always tell my close friend like, oh, I really want to make a new friend this year. And I said that for a long time until after COVID finished. And for some odd reason, that was just like a great time for people to, to really get more connected. Cause I feel like a lot of people didn't have that for so long that they were more open and willing afterwards. Oh, definitely. I think because it COVID really exposed how just great it is to be around people <laughs> as you're as you, as you can't see them for a year plus. Yeah. I noticed yeah. a lot of my own friends who would normally not be the ones to want to get out with basically chomping at the bit to go and do things. Yeah, yeah. Afterwards. In terms of like things after COVID though, like at a certain point when it moved from online to physical again, do you feel like you've lost certain friends from that online world and like sort of shifted your attention to friends who meet up with you more physically or did you retain a lot of it? I retained a lot of it probably through the role play groups that I ran. A lot of it was online and I just I'm still in touch with a lot of those people since I still run the groups. Nice, nice. But it was a difficult transition even for me going back into in-person events. And I, I work in sales and marketing. I like to think that I'm pretty charismatic. And even I, when he first got out of the lockdowns, was like, oh, I gotta do eye contact again. <laughs> it, it can be nerve wracking, honestly. Yeah. I feel like for me personally, I've I've lost uh, that sort of online um, feel. I know a lot of people interact on Discord and stuff, but I never quite got into that. I, it's just something interesting to know, I suppose. I think also there's some virtual events that are much more fun than others. Like role playing, I keep bringing it up, but that's probably the pinnacle, the most fun you could have online outside of the video game, just as a shared experience. I had to go do some atrocious work happy hours that were online, and I am glad those died off. As you <laughs> probably have hold up your martini glass, and you're like, wow, look at this. Wait, really? Yeah, I, I am happy that those, like, it was fun the first two and a half ton, and it got old fast. Two and a half. <laughs> That's pretty much all I have to say in terms of all my advice and experiences regarding, like, making new friends. All I'm going to say is, once again, just be open to it. You never know, honestly. It can come when you least expect it. If you put effort into it, pretty good chance you can keep a good friendship. Yeah. All right, well, thanks so much for coming on, Ryan. Thank you, Scott. All right, catch you guys in the next episode.